Psalm 84. Good morning, Latoya Wells. I'm just seeing whoever I see. Rhonda Aaron, good morning. Kishara McPherson, good morning. Make sure y'all share this if you haven't already. Shani Sharai, you better put that scripture in there. My God. Evelyn Butts, good morning. Yes, yeah, Psalm 84, verses 1 through 2. Uh, I thank God for these awesome musicians, just everyone who serves every single week. I appreciate you all so, 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 so much, anointed uh, men and women of God. I love you all so much. All right, Psalm 84, 1 through 2. I'm going to do my best to teach this this morning. Uh, I hope not to bore you, um, and I hope that me sitting and not walking around uh, will not cause you to become disinterested, but I pray that God says something um, <laughs> that would change your life. Sow that seed, don't sow that weed. Amen. All right. <laughs> Somebody said in the conversation, sow that seed, don't sow that weed. My God. That's a whole shirt. Praise God. Sow that seed, don't sow that weed. Praise God. All right. Psalm 84, verses 1 through 2. Why am I in Mark? I don't know. But let me go ahead to Psalm 84. And um, I believe the Lord is going to speak to us clearly today. And I think just the manifestation of his presence that we have experienced this morning will speak to what we're talking about. All right? If you have it, say amen. All right. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. That's all we'll read in the context of this psalm. And um, if I were to put a title to what, we're, what we will be talking about today, it is this. It's his presence for me. It's his presence for me. Can y'all type that in the chat for me? It's his presence for me. And um, let's, let's move forward. Um, so March 15th, uh, which will be eight days from now, I believe. Uh, it was the last Sunday that we had an in-person worship gathering, March 15th. Uh, the last time a lot of us were together were February 28th. If you uh, can see on your screen here, there's... A uh, picture of me in my, in my lock days. Oh, how I miss my locks. My wife doesn't miss them, uh, but I miss them. Uh, March 15th was the last time that we came together. It's been a year since we physically gathered for corporate worship outside of the worship team and the media team, uh, the musicians and just some other people uh, that I've been blessed to see. I haven't seen many of you all. Uh, the time where the partners, we had the partner appreciation, um, I wasn't feeling well, neither my Neither me nor my wife are feeling well, so I had not had the chance to see you all. So unless you come online, uh, thank you all to who, for, for those that, you, that do come online and, and comment. I really don't know how everyone's doing, and that's hard for me because I, I really love you all, and I miss you all greatly. Uh, but for the safety of the families we serve, uh, the sanctuary, as we have experienced today, it has transitioned into our homes, um, our cars, and um, our office spaces, um, as most gatherings now are online, we have what we call virtual church, the virtual sanctuary. And although, uh, particularly speaking for me, it's not the preferred way of meeting, um, I do believe it has contributed to the global initiative to decrease the number of COVID cases around the world. And although we do have plans of returning soon. Somebody just type soon in the chat. Somebody say soon in the sanctuary if you can for me soon. Come on, I can't hear you. Come on, thank you. Although we do have plans of returning soon, we are using wisdom in how we move ahead. And um, as, I, as I was just thinking about our church and our gathering, what I miss most, I know some of y'all miss the, the, uh, the food that we gave prior to service and <laughs> the snacks and uh, <laughs> a lot of the different things that we offered. Uh, what I miss most are the times that we experienced the powerful presence of God together. What I loved most was the transition oftentimes after the worship team sets the atmosphere, um, I would come up and just try to continue to exalt God. And if you all can remember, uh, we had some very powerful moves of God. Y'all remember when we used to come together? We had some very powerful times with God, and I really miss that. 
um, because I believe there's something that happens in the corporate worship. I believe when people come together, united in their faith to experience God, there's something powerful that happened. And that's what I miss most. When the spirit of God would just break out, people start running, people start jumping, almost to the point that we didn't want to continue doing anything else other than remaining in that moment. His presence for us was really what captivated our gathering. And for our church in particular, we are very sensitive to praise and we're very sensitive to worship and we're very sensitive to the presence of God. It's a strong component of our culture. It's almost uncommon for you to come in the sanctuary and not lift your hands, right? As you see, this is one of our uh, worship models for today. God bless Chris who did not know that she was going to be on live today. And I hope she does not charge me or come at me for using her picture. But this posture is common here. This is what we do. Can somebody just type in the chat, this is what we do? Can we type in the chat, this is what we do? Uh, this is what we do. It's a part of our culture. Worship is a part of our culture, not just locally, but on the global level. Our apostle, um, he teaches worship. He teaches us that worship is critical to the move of God. So I I'm used to this. I'm used to seeing people gather for worship. It is common for us to radically and unrestrictedly lift up songs of adoration and words of exaltation to God with a desire to see his glory amongst us. There's a method to our madness. We desire to see God, so we worship him. We glorify him. We magnify him. We solicit the manifestation of his presence far beyond tangible benefits. Because there are some people that only want the presence for the presence. All right, let me spell that. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E -E -E for presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E -E and nothing's wrong with that, right? He supplies all of our need according to his riches in glory, right? But for me, his presence is enough. His manifested presence is enough, right? And according to Psalm 73, 28, we know that it is good to be near God. The writer says in Psalm 73, uh, 28, it is good that we are near God, making him our shelter. So at, so at the root of our worship is simply the desire to be with the Father. That's it. I know people worship God for a lot of different things, and, and I'm not saying that God can't meet us where we are, but I think at the root of our worship, there should be this desire to be with him. Just want to be with you. It's not a song. It's a sentiment. Are y'all with me this morning? That's just not a song. That thing hits you like, God, there are a lot of people I tried, I thought I wanted to be with, right? There are some friends. There are some situations that I, that I thought I wanted. But God is, is the most consistent presence. You know, sometimes you're around people and you're trying to figure out who they're going to be today. Like, I don't know who I'm dealing with today. God is one person that you never have to figure out who you're dealing with because he says, I don't change. I'm unchanging. I'm unfailing. I, I don't change. This is why I love being in the presence of God because I always know who I'm dealing with. <laughs> I always know that if I get near him, he's going to be who he is. He's faithful to his word. This is why we worship him. And as a consequence, um, although we are physically separated, we have continued to unite our hearts uh, in the spirit of God for greater encounters with the Holy One. The reason why I take these online streams serious is because I believe that although we are physically separated, Pastor Wendy, God will really do something in the corporate worship, even though it's virtual. And, he, and the Lord began to speak with me regarding that this week. And he told me to, pre to prepare the people for corporate manifestations of his spirit, even though we are physically separated. He says, I'm about to do something um, as it relates to how I release my presence, because there are some people who think that because we are separated, we can't be synced. Okay. Separation does not denote that we can't be synced. S-Y-N-C-E-D. We can still be synced, although we're separated, because here it is. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I shall also be. That's not a physical gathering alone. Because you can be physically gathered, but be spiritually disconnected. And as a result of that, the presence of God can't come because just because we've I've been to places where the room has been filled with people, but absent of presence. And sometimes we think glory to God. Yes. Sometimes we think because the room is filled with people that is also full of his presence. 
But there's this such thing called Ichabod, which means that the presence has or the glory has departed. How many people have denoted presence to population? Thinking that, oh my God, thousands of people are there. God must be there. Thousands of people have gathered. His presence must be there. No, his presence is always not denoted by the number of people, but rather by the number of hearts united in the Holy Spirit so his presence can manifest. Are y'all with me this morning? He said, I need my people to know that being separated does not mean we cannot be synced. And he says he's about to demonstrate the power of his presence to a people who will not allow physical limitations to limit the corporate pursuit of supernatural manifestations. Can you type in the chat real quick? Supernatural manifestations. Supernatural manifestations. I'm trying to stay in my seat because I really want to take my time. But, but supernatural manifestations are coming for those who can sink in the spirit. That's why when you wake up in, on Sunday mornings, even though you may keep your pajamas on, that's okay. I want you to keep your pajamas on but change your mindset. Because I don't want you to think that just because I'm home, God cannot unite me with what with what is taking place on the screen that I'm looking at. I believe that God is about to demonstratively uh, bring forth a move of God through live stream that we have never seen before. I know this may sound crazy to some of you, but many of you will begin to feel the unction of Holy Spirit to stand up in your homes, uh, to bow in your homes, uh, to walk around in your homes, uh, to pace in your homes, uh, doing online line worship uh, and you will actively engage in what you are viewing on a screen uh, because God's omnipresence. David says, where can I go uh, away from you? You are everywhere. Wherever I make my bed, uh, wherever I acknowledge you, you are there. And God is about to allow his omnipresence uh, to unite us in a way uh, where we're going to tap into his unseen realm uh, and encounter heaven in unprecedented places. Uh, can somebody just say, come Holy Spirit? Come on, say it again. Say, come Holy Spirit. Come. One more time. Say, come Holy Spirit. The reason why I say that is because the Bible says our bodies are, are the temple of Holy Spirit, which means every time we worship, he comes and not just take root where we are. He takes root in who we are. See, a lot of times we're asking God to manifest in the building when he really wants to manifest in a body because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is why we got to be careful of what we do with our temples throughout the week. Because it's the place where he abides. And the Lord told me, he says, as I am reforming, I believe the body of Christ is in a state of reformation. I think that God, by the by way of Holy Spirit, is revealing what he's really trying to do and how he's really trying to maneuver his church in such a time as this. The Lord told me that he's rebuilding temples before we re-enter temples. Catch this, please. Our bodies are the temple of Holy Spirit. See what the church, what, what the separation from the building has done. It has realigned us uh, as being the temples of Holy Spirit. See, for so long, we thought that the presence was coming to a building when in all actuality, the presence is coming to a body. It's coming into a person. It's engulfing a people. And he says, here's what I'm trying to do to my people. I want you to know that through the live stream, I, I can still move powerfully uh, because if you can get the revelation that that I'm rebuilding temples. Somebody say in the chat, I am a temple. <laughs> Woo! Huh. I am a temple. Huh? I am a temple. Come on, get that. I am a temple. The Lord says, I'm trying to get my sons uh, and my daughters uh, to allow me to rebuild their temples uh, before we re-enter temples uh, because I don't want you coming back into a temple uh, with, ha with not having done renovation to the temple that houses my presence. Glory to God. I don't care uh, what things you do to the church building uh, if you don't do a renovation of the heart. Uh, as temples of God, uh, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 19, um, it is imperative uh, that we we are more desirable uh, of his presence in us uh, than we are desiring of a presence in a building. See, so many people are trying to get back to the building uh, because they don't know how to steward the presence of God in them. Am I preaching to anybody on this Sunday morning? I thank God uh, for the many churches uh, that are taking the time to renovate sanctuaries, uh, to update technology, uh, to beautify the house of God. Uh, but may I submit to you this morning uh, that renovated buildings don't renovate hearts. 
Choco Man Shabbat. Only the presence of God does that. You can get new pews, but if you're still entertaining an old presence, then the people's lives will not be changed. And the Lord says, I'm about to move in the hearts of men and women who cry out for my presence in a way that welcomes new dimensions of glory into their lives and into the earth. Somebody say, come Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Say it again. Come Holy Spirit. As the focus for many churches, watch this, has been to strategize ways to stay connected to the people. We are in meetings every week trying to figure out who's still here and who's left, who's still connected and who's going back. And all of those things are important. But may I admonish you to be just as focused and be desiring that we stay connected to his presence as we are trying to stay connected to people. As we're trying to figure out who still goes here. Now, my question is, is his presence still here? <laughs> is God still here? Are we hosting his presence and his glory? Are we pursuing his presence? Because as we begin to consciously pursue the presence of God together through our live streams and even through our distance worship, there's going to be manifestations of the supernatural power of God in our lives like we've never seen before. God says, I'm about to move in temples. Temples. Hikoban, Shanamansu. I'm about to move in homes. I'm about to take habitation in the lives of my people in ways unimaginable. There are going to be miracles in your home. There are going to be signs in your home. There are going to be wonders in your home. There are going to be things that happen in your home. It's going to happen so, so awesomely that by the time we get back, that's all we expect. We will not be satisfied with church as usual. See, people keep saying it's not going to be church as usual, and they're talking about advancements into an, in technology and not access into greater levels of his presence. Oh, we know that church is not. We know that. We know we got to update with the times, but why update with the times and not update with our connection to heaven? Lord says, I'm trying to make temples and homes. I want to make myself real so that the house of God is no longer a place of observation, but a place of participation. I want it to the point where, you know, Pastor Jeff, we've seen God move so mightily in our homes because watch this. I don't think worship starts in the sanctuary in anyway. I think we've tried to train people to do something in the sanctuary without cultivating that same activity at home. So it becomes harder to get something done in the sanctuary because I'm not used to doing this as a lifestyle. But anything that is done as a lifestyle does not stop. It's always done. I will bless the Lord at his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? I created a lifestyle of worship. I created an appetite for the glory of God. There, there is an appetite, glory to God, for the glory of God that is rising up in the earth. Uh, and we are about to feast on his goodness uh, in ways we've never imagined. We are about to feast on his goodness in our homes. Uh, some of you all will be in your cars. Glory to God. Uh, you're going to feast on his goodness in your office space. Uh, we're about to feast on his goodness throughout the normal routine of our day where you'll be driving and have to pull over. Why? Because you were listening to a song uh, and that song brought you into a realm uh, that God wanted to reveal himself in. And you'll say, God, thank you. I, I glorify you. I worship you. I honor you. We're going to see him to the point that by the time we re-enter the building, it would have already been as days of heaven in the earth, in our homes, and in our gatherings where we are before we come back together. There is a, please hear me this morning. Please don't leave the, the, the live stream. I'm almost done. There, there is a move of God. I, I, know, I know you can feel it. There's a move of God that is preceding our return to the house of God. God says, we're, 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 so many people are waiting to get back to experience the glory that he's trying to reveal in your house. It's going to precede our return to the house of God. It, it's, and it's happening, y'all. It, it's happening now. That's why I want people to be engaged, because if we can get it to happen now, what's going to happen when all 500 of us come back together? What's going to happen? We can, we can really be back in the sanctuary. You know what people are coming back for? The glory. That's it. 
They're coming back for the glory. That's what is going to be the new attraction. The gl- <laughs> people trying to figure out what's going to be the new thing that draws people. The glory. <laughs> I know that's too deep and too simple at the same time. That's it. <laughs> that's going to be the new attraction. It's going, to be the glory. it's going to be the glory. I love the psalmist in this text because there's a desire that he expresses for the presence of God. He says, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. You remember before you got a position, before you got on a team, before you start serving, I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about when you were younger. Many of us came into God. Remember when you were just excited to go to church just to worship? I'm sorry. I know that ain't. ain't. I I remember when I had my Bible and my three-piece suit. Remember when Value City had the suits? Y'all remember when Value City sold suits, do (laughs) y'all? Boy, Omar, remember uh, Official Sunday Doc had to get that Value City suit? But you wanted to be ready. Why? Because I wanted to make sure I was prepared for the presence of God. That's it. Before there was an advancement in technology, before there were TVs and you could see your phone, I mean, the word on your phone, we had this. We were paper Bible saved and we just simply desired to be in the presence of God. And the bigger your Bible, the more anointed you were. (laughs) The more anointed and the more ready you were, you had that Bible. I'm talking about when it was really a joy, the joy of salvation. When you really just love being saved, don't nobody know me. I'm just someone that's trying to tap into the presence of God. I wanted his presence. That's what the psalmist says. I want the presence of God. He says, how lovely is your dwelling place. I faint, longing to enter the courts of the Lord. When I read this, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, son, I am changing what people want from me when they gather for me. He says, I'm changing the appetites of my people and refocusing their why. Why am I online right now? Why, am I, why do I want to come back to the building? Why do I want to gather again, aside from the fact that I miss seeing my brothers and my sisters in Christ? He says, I'm refocusing the why. He said, men and women of God will no longer look for places that host programs, but rather houses that host the presence of God. You're going to find that people spend thousands of dollars trying to fulfill what simply works by faith. He says, people are no longer going to look for programs because I can watch a program on television. Please hear me, y'all, in context. The main attraction will not be whether or not a church has children's ministry, although it's needed. Do research. Most people join churches because most, they're looking for children's ministry. They're looking for good music. And then the teaching. Oftentimes in that order. Is there something for my children? It doesn't mean that it's not needed. Y'all, I'm not about to shut down the, the, the youth ministry, but I want y'all to hear me in context. That won't be the main attraction. The main attraction will not be whether or not a church has outreach programs, whether or not y'all go out in the community and serve, even though that's needed. It won't be the main attraction. The main attraction will not be whether or not a church has small groups, because I need somebody to connect to outside, even though it's needed. Hear me. It won't be the main attraction. But here's what the Lord told me. He says, son, the pool will be my presence. See, you have to become more creative when you're less consecrated. (laughs) Why? Because consecration takes sacrifice. But creativity takes strategy, plan, intelligence. And I'm, and I'm not, hear, hear me, you trying to say that God don't give creativity? I'm not trying to say that. He's creator himself. He created heaven and earth. What I'm saying is you have to become more creative when you're not consecrated. What that means, when you're not set apart and just pulling for his presence. He says the question now will be, is his presence in the house? Because watch this, I have no need to get in my car anymore. I've gone a year without getting in my car and going anywhere. I can watch this online. (laughs) 
Hikomansha. This will be the distinction. I can watch this online. But there's something when y'all gather that even though I got a portion of it online, I want to come see him for myself. See, Jesus, y'all know this. Go to the Gospels. He didn't attract the crowds with brochures and flyers. Well, if it was doing these days, he might have a flyer because of where we are, but that wasn't the main attraction. People saw something different on his life. And his presence pulled without him asking. So y'all, when the presence really shows up, you may not even have to tell anybody to come with you to church. Just be like, look, turn on this live for 15 seconds and I promise you, that's it. Yeah, I ain't going to tell you what to do. Just look, click this. Just open this for 15 seconds. I ain't gonna After that, it's up to you. His presence is so profound where I worship that his presence does the talking. The presence of God, Ricky, is going to be the pull. Y'all, we're going to see droves of people coming because the presence of God is housed here. There is, y'all hear me, there is a people rising up who are done with church productions. It doesn't mean that we're not going to do them. It just means that doesn't get me. Oh, great. Y'all got a real donkey that came in the church. Great. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, my gosh. That is awesome. This is so wonderful and creative. But there's a people rising up that's not moved by that. There's a people rising up that is no longer moved by entertainment. I, I'm wise enough and I've tapped into the presence enough to know the difference between heaven and and gift. I don't care about your title. I don't care about your platform. I don't care about your position. I don't care about accolades and recognition. My question is, is his presence in the house? <laughs> because at the end of the day, that's all that can change me. There is a people saying like David, only thing I desire is the presence of God because church has become about everything but his presence. I don't care who opens up the service. It's his presence in the house. I don't care who's leading the song. It's his presence. Yo, I don't care if a monkey come up here and lead. It's his presence in the house. Can the monkey bring Jesus to where we are? I don't care who preaching today. I don't care who prophesying today. I don't even care if Pastor Jeff is up today. Whoever is up. Can they welcome his presence? That's the question. Is his presence in the house? The psalmist desired to dwell with God. And that word uh, in the text, it says, what joy for those who can live in your house, who can dwell in your presence, always singing your praises. That word uh, live means dwell, abide, to sit. Sometimes, y'all, we're so fast in our worship services, we're not willing to sit until he shows up. I was praying this morning, and the Lord dealt with me. He said, son, you have to learn how to sit. He said, sometimes you just move too fast. I've given you access, but after I've given you access, you've created your own agenda. Who creates the agenda for the access he gave? Y'all, please stick with me today. I know we're a little past 1130. Please, please. Thank you. You said take me. I'm going to do it. God, God says, I'm trying to get my people to sit with me. To dwell. I was listening to Apostle talk about this. To dwell, to abide. That's not something fast. It don't mean that we're going to be in church all day. Watch this. The reason why people complained about being in church all day because it's a long time when he's not there. <laughs> It's a long time when he's not there. That's why we, y'all, if the true kabod is there, I'm going to give my analogy, y'all. I'm going to give my analogy that, that I, 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 I was going to hold it. Pastor Jay, is it, is, it too, is, it too, is it too advanced? I'm going to give it. Y'all, when you are having real good intimacy, I'm going to use the word intimacy for the sake of the lies. Nobody rushes good intimacy. 
I got folks in here that trying to look like pastor. I'm say, I'm actually I'm single, so I don't know what you're talking about, pastor. I don't know what good intimacy is. I am saved. I am John the Baptist saved. He prepared the way. Y'all ain't been saved your whole life. Nobody rushes good intimacy. When it's good, you're not complaining. I know this is, I know this is a stretch, y'all. I know this is a stretch, but you're going to get what I'm talking about. Nobody rushes good intimacy. So the glory can't be there if we're ready to cut it off. Because good intimacy is something you want to last forever. We complain about the time in church because oftentimes either, watch this, we were about to go to the next portion and then we check the agenda or we were never there and we're pulled back into a carnal realm that we're now ready to move to the next thing. But when the presence of God really shows up, y'all hear this. His presence was so potent, he could only show Moses a portion of his, of his nature. The backside of his nature. When the presence of God really shows up, nobody wants to rush that. For so long, we've been okay with sitting in pews absent of his presence. Why come sit even 30 minutes in a place where he's not present? <laughs> Why come to a church, a place where we don't experience the manifestation of the one we've came for? Y'all didn't come for me. You didn't come for the praise team. You didn't come for a good sound. You didn't come for children's church. We came for the king of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. And the Lord told me, he says, Jeff, and y'all, I'm, I'm not just talking about waiting until you get back to the sanctuary. God is beckoning us to begin to sit in our homes. The Lord woke me up Saturday morning around two something, wide awake to pray. Now, I was tired the rest of the Saturday, but I'm starting to respond to the times that he beckons me because there's something he's trying to reveal to me concerning who he is. So many of y'all may feel a pull to start remaining. Stay there. <laughs> Stay in his presence, expecting him to show up and not give you anything but reveal himself to you. <laughs> because watch this, when he shows up, everything that you need comes with him. The Lord says he's looking for those who would rather sit in his presence and be spiritually engaged with heaven than to just occupy a pew. Those who will worship and wait. Can you type that in the chat? Worship and wait. Because I think we become so commercialized in our services that we now allow our commercialized agenda to control what the Spirit of God is really trying to do. Now, if he's not manifesting himself and we just don't feel like he's trying to reveal himself, then let's move. But if you can sense that his presence is trying to be made known in a unique way, we have to learn how to worship and wait. I was studying that this morning in my own personal time. I want to wait until he moves because when he comes, he's well worth the wait. And this is crazy because as New Testament believers under the covenant of Jesus, we in the waiting time, we have the advantage of access to a presence that even the psalmist didn't have access to. I'm going to help you all real quick, then I'm almost done. It, it, we have, somebody type access, because I want to show you all something real quick. Go ahead and say it in the sanctuary, say access. If you notice in the psalm, the author says, watch this, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. Keyword courts, everybody say courts, Right? He says that. And then in verse 10, he says, a single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. Right? Keyword courts. He says courts. And he says, I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live, in the, than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. Notice how he says courts and gate. Right? Courts and gate. The psalmist desired to be in the presence of the Lord. But he did not have the same proximity to God 
that we have today. Go and read throughout the new, I'm, I'm sorry, throughout the Old Testament Psalms. You'll often see things like enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. Why are they just saying gates and courts? Why aren't they saying enter the holy of holies? Know the song? Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Now, that's great for us, but we have greater proximity than that. <laughs> and watch this. In the Old Testament, before the Israelites worshiped God in the temple in 1 Kings 6, when, you know, it talks about Solomon building the temple, they had a temporary worship center known as the tabernacle. Before, they, before the temple was built, they created tabernacles, which was formed during the time of Moses. You can go and read that in Exodus uh, 27. And the, and the tabernacle was holy. It was, it was set apart for worship and sacrifices to God. And this tabernacle was separated into three areas. You might can see it on your screen now. You had the, the outer court, you had the holy place, and then you had the holy of holies. So in our text, when you see the outer court where the altar of burnt offerings and the laver uh, were set, when you see these places here, then the gate, enter his gate. You see the gate with the pointing arrow, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. He's talking about this outer court. He says, I, I, will, I, I would love to be in your court. And if you go read through Psalm 84, he says, I'm making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, which is also interchanged for Zion, which is also uh, relevant to the presence of God. He says, I'll make a, a pilgrimage uh, to Zion or to Jerusalem. Watch this. Just to be in your courts. Not the holy of holies. Right. Because the priests and the Levites ministered in the outer court as, as they offered sacrifices uh, for sin and guilt, as well as other sacrifices. So the sons of Korah, right, uh, who, who had written this psalm, Psalm 84, they're saying, I want to be in your court, but not the most holy place. Because not everyone had access to the most holy place. In the center of the outer court was the place where the priest could enter called the holy place. It's the second part here with the table of showbread and uh, menorah and the altar of incense. And those things have significance, but I don't have the time to share that today. But only the priest could go into the holy place, right? And then once a year, you had the high priest that could go into the holy of holies, that's the most holy place. That's a smaller room, which you see where the Ark of the Covenant is. Right. Which we talk about the Shekinah glory was revealed. That's where the most the high priest could go, that the second chamber could only be entered in by the high priest one day out of the year. Watch this. That he could only go into this most holy place one day out of the year. And it was called the day of atonement. And when the high priest went into there, he had to go with the blood sacrifice. It was here that the high priest atoned for the sins of himself and the sins of Israel. He would go in and he would sprinkle blood from a sacrificial animal on the mercy seat to appease the wrath and anger of God for past sins that were committed. This was the only place in the world where this atonement could take place so that God could still relate with his people because sin had separated God from his people. So anyone who entered this chamber, if you were not the high priest and if you weren't coming in the time you were supposed to come with the sacrifice that you were supposed to bring, you would be killed. It was limited access. I want y'all to catch this because <laughs> I think sometimes we take for granted the access that we have been given through Jesus Christ. Although the tabernacle and the temple emphasized the presence of God amongst his people, the most holy place and the holies of holies was not able to be entered in because of the holiness of God. And because of the, the, the sins of God's people, it was inaccessible. This is why the psalmist expressed his desire to be in the courts of the Lord rather than the most holy place because he was not permitted to that proximity. However, somebody say however. <laughs> oh, as believers under the new covenant of Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, we celebrate this and we preach about it. You know, preachers go, and the veil was rent, uh, and the veil was rent, and we go crazy. But do you really understand what that means? That the veil was rent. Uh, uh, we, we see this. Uh, Matthew talks about this. Mark talks about this. Luke's between the holy place uh, and the most holy place uh, was supernaturally torn uh, when Jesus uh, died for our sin. It was ripped in half uh, and it symbolized uh, that the way to God uh, was now open and accessible uh, to those who received Jesus Christ as Savior by 
faith. Uh, the blood and an, of an animal was no longer needed. Glory to God. Uh, there was a blood uh, in a man uh, that sufficed uh, for the sacrifice uh, that was needed uh, to give us complete access. Somebody shout complete access. Glory to God. Complete access was given. Now we don't have to wait until one day out of the year for a high priest to go before the Lord. We have a high priest. Somebody say, I have a high priest. We have a high priest uh, that went all the way uh, and tore the veil uh, and has given us complete access. Hebrews, not, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews 10, uh, verse 19 through 22. Uh, it says, therefore, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, since we have confidence, why do I have confidence? Uh, because of what Jesus did, uh, we have confidence uh, to enter the most holy place uh, by the blood of Jesus, uh, by a new uh, and living way uh, opened up for us uh, through the curtain that is uh, his body uh, and since uh, we have a great priest uh, over the house of God, uh, let us draw near. Let us draw near. Huh? Let us draw near uh, to God uh, with a sincere heart uh, and with the full assurance that faith brings. Uh, in other words, family, we have been permitted uh, to enter the presence of God without restrictions. Can I tell you something? Even what you did this week. Even the person you got mad at this week, uh, even the thing you did this week uh, that was not like God, uh, because of the blood of Jesus, uh, all you have to say is, Father, thank you for your grace. Uh, thank you for your mercy. Now, I'm not admonishing you uh, to get in the habit uh, of just sinning uh, and then coming under the blood of Jesus. Uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, because of the blood, uh, there is no sin. Uh, there is nothing that you can do uh, that will separate you uh, from the presence of God. Uh, what can we say now? Uh, what can we say uh, as it regards uh, to what God has given us, uh, that there is nothing uh, that can separate us uh, from the love of God. Uh, not no angel, uh, not no demon, uh, not our thing present uh, or things to come. Uh, we have been given full access to the, I don't know if y'all get this. We have been given full access uh, to the presence of God with no restrictions. No restrictions. And because this access is not confined, confined to a building, we can lift our hands everywhere and step into the most, watch this, the most holy place can be in your bedroom. The most holy place can be in your car. The most holy place, Mando Kobabasha. the psalmist was limited to the courts, but new covenant believers have full access into the most holy place. Every time, watch this, play real softly for me. When I'm at home, something real uh, worshipful. When I'm at home, what I do is I turn on a worship track. And I don't have to call a high priest to check if I'm okay. I can lift my hand. I can lift my hands to the Lord and say, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, it faints for you. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Better is one day in your presence than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. I don't have to go get a, catch this. I don't have to get an animal. I don't have to get a goat, a lamb. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. I, watch this. I don't have to wait to get back to 1136 Centerville Turnpike. I can lift my hands to the Lord and say, Oh Lord, Thou art my God and I exalt Thee and praise thy name O oh Lord thou art my God and I exalt thee and praise thy name O oh Lord wherever you are you are my God 
and I exalt Thee and praise Thy name. Come on, lift your hands to Jesus. Oh Lord, hey, You are my God, and I exalt and praise thy name oh Lord you are my God oh Basha and I exalt thee and praise thy name Sing that with me. Lift your hands up. Oh, Lord. Come on, I know. You are my God. And I exalt thee. And praise thy name. Come on, sing it with me if you're watching. Come on. Oh, oh Lord. Yeah. Are my God, and I exalt Thee and praise Thy name. Oh, bash that I'm a man to sing. Oh, Lord, yeah, You are my God, and. I exalt me and Listen, when you're home by yourself, you can begin to worship the Lord and invite Him to where you are. And what will happen is that He'll reveal to you Himself in that outer court. He'll reveal to you himself in that most holy place. I want you to become so aware and conscious of the presence of God every day that you're living. Family, I'm telling you, there are dimensions of God's glory that we have not seen yet. We're going to see the fragrance of God and the nature of God manifest so powerfully in our gatherings. The Lord is giving us access and giving us way into realms of glory. All it, all it takes is a desire. All it takes is a request for him to manifest himself. Hallelujah. And you're going to see God's glory manifest powerfully. Listen, before we give, I want you to lift your hands and we're going to sing it one more time. Come on, say, Oh Lord. Oh, oh Lord. Thou art my God. And I exalt thee and praise thy name. Come on, sing it one more time, sing it. Oh, Lord, thou art my God, and I exalt Father, we bless you for your presence and your spirit. Let us abide in this presence forever. Woo. Let us live here. Let us live in this place. Let us live in this place. 
God, let us live in this house, this place of worship, this place of glory. Get glory out of us as we lift our hearts and our lives to you forevermore. We bless you for this. Oh, bye bye, Monday. Oh Lord, Thou art my God, and I exalt Thee, oh God, and praise Thy name, oh Lord, You are my God, and I exalt thee and praise, oh God, thy name, oh Lord. Ashe branda vanusu, he be be beyond ababa kancho. You are. My God, and I exalt Thee, and praise Thy name. There's something that's going to begin to happen in the lives of you all who devote time in in worship and in your homes. Brande me ko banda, she branda baba banda so. The Spirit of God is going to move so powerfully in homes. For those of y'all that will receive this, I'm talking about beginning even now. When you feel the when you feel the pull of God to come away with Him, I don't care what time of the day it is, pull away, and you're going to see Him begin to manifest His presence in such powerful ways. We'll learn to abide and to dwell and to sit with Him. As His glory rests amongst us, we give Him praise now. Hallelujah.